This is the real Tom Rose, and uh, we're dealing with multiple absolute values here. Now, absolute values are uh, annoying at the best of times, and we have two of them, <laughs> so that's super annoying. Um, now, uh, I'm gonna use a little, a little, I'm gonna cheat a little bit to make this a simpler question. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, so I really don't wanna handle multiple absolute values, so I'm hoping there's gonna be some trick we can use to get rid of one, and it looks like there is. So the thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the numbers in the answer choices, and there's 10 numbers in here, right? There's two for each answer choice. And I'm gonna plug all of those numbers into the top absolute value, the x plus two. And what I'm noticing is that no matter what answer choices I pick, the top absolute value will always be positive. Right, so pick any of these numbers. The smallest number is negative two. And if I plug that in, two, negative two plus two is zero. So I'm sorry positive or zero. Um, so the, the worst, the smallest scenario for that top absolute value is that it's zero. Well, in that case, when the, when the top absolute value is always positive or zero, we know what that absolute value sign is doing. It's doing nothing. Because absolute value signs just operate on negative things and make them positive. But if it's never negative, it's not really doing anything. So let's get rid of those. And let's move this one. Let's multiply both sides by that and move that over to the right. So what you'll end up with is, if we rewrite this, x plus two um, equals three times absolute value of x minus one. So that's a, more, that's a simpler problem. And to solve it, we need to look at, um, we can't do algebra on absolute values until we know their sign. So let's consider the two cases, the two possible universes um, that could exist. One of them is a universe where x minus one is negative. Right? And there's another universe where x minus 1 is positive. And for each of these scenarios, we know what the absolute value will do. So when the, when the stuff inside the absolute value is negative, we know what it does. It multiplies by negative 1. So we can just do that. So we'll get x plus 2 equals um, 3 times negative 1 times x minus 1. In the world where it's positive, well, we'll come back to that. So let's keep solving this for now. So we'll end up with um, x plus two equals negative three x plus three. Um, add three x to both sides. And let's subtract two from both sides. And you get four x equals three minus two is one, or x equals one quarter. Now do a double check that this matches our assumption. So if I plug one quarter in here, is that in fact negative? Yes, it is. So we're solid. That's going to be an answer. Um, and I can already actually pick the first answer choice. It's the only one that has a one quarter in it. But let's keep going to see how they came up with that five halves. That five halves comes from this, the universe where x minus one is positive. So when x minus one is positive, we know what the absolute value sign is doing. It does nothing. So you end up with x plus two equals three times x minus one or x plus two equals three x minus three, or five equals four x, or five fourths equals x. And and I can see that I made a little, mis little mistake in here. So when I should have subtracted x from both sides, which means this should have been two x which would have been five halves. There you go, so that, those are your two answers. Five halves and one quarter. And that's what, now you can see where they both come from.